to all our listeners thank you for tuning in let us know your feedback questions or concerns hope you're all doing well and enjoy listening to our conversations episode 2 showdown in lil mota dear kaito how are you hanging in there kid hope you aren't annoying your aunt too much it's time for a weekly bedtime story are you ready all right here we go where did we leave off oh yeah the history the promise and the steely determination in your mother's eyes like when she sees me reaching out for the salt at the dining table we had made an entire wall of clues probable motives points of entries exits i grabbed my notes and headed to the security guard's office only to find they were closed for lunch 30 minutes of waiting and a grumbling stomach later we ended exactly where we started there was nothing in the security feed no logs nothing dejected i headed home sat on the couch played the incident over and over again in my head there was even a version where they were all replaced by the cast of the avengers luckily before the interpretations could get any crazier someone rang the doorbell who is it yelled your mom from the kitchen it's the neighbors i said smiling awkwardly as they looked perplexed trying to understand why she sounded so angry and explaining to them that it was an anger but the stress of trying to keep you from dunking your head into the stew seemed a lot harder they came in to drop in some flowers i said which ones asked your mom roses i said roses roses said the voice in my head as it took me back to the incident there was the third to the smoke and now a newly added hint of the syrupy rose scent in the air that night i remembered everyone around me but there were these two two foot creatures that stood guard by the door i ran to the door as i simultaneously traced the events in my head I checked around to find an empty packet that still smelled of rose. Mongrels, I said. Mongrels were the outcast of the Mongols community who were known for precisely two things. One, organizing illegal snake fights, and two, their love for the rose syrup drenched tulip leaves. Are you certain, your mom asked. At this point, my interpretations of the incident had crossed the astral plane. where i played all characters but the sounds sights voices and the smells never changed if we find the mongrels we may have a shot at finding the wolf and the bow tie i said luckily one of our other non perplex neighbors had a contact at the motown mayor's house and offered to set up a meeting motown was the last township at the western edge of the kingdom predominantly inhabited by mongooses they were a wealthy crowd with their hands in almost every business one could think of the next day i walked down the mayor's long hallway decorated with framed newspaper articles of every mayor led treaty integral in keeping the venomous serpents away from the kingdom into a strangely even longer waiting room filled with articles and pictures of the mayor's influence over the kingdom's economy over the last few decades the mayor sat on his freakishly oversized chair in a perfectly tailored suit and gold rimmed glasses he heard me out patiently and asked his admiral to accompany me in finding the mongrels the admiral didn't speak much he was a large sized saint bernard that night we hit almost every shop trying to find if anyone had seen the wolf the serpent the fire breathers or the mongrels i was a larger mammal in the mongoose neighborhood so in order to not godzilla around their neighborhood anymore i decided to head back for the day when i accidentally bumped into a mongrel before i could apologize he freaked out and ran seeing him another one looked at me from across the street and ran behind him It must be them I exclaimed as I chased them across Motown till we entered a dark pool in the alley. I paced down my steps as I tried to explore the area for the mongrels. A door opened briefly for a few seconds 
It was so dark that the slightest ray of light could be noticed. I walked towards the door, whose hinges were still slightly luminous, with the light escaping its crevices. Looks like an abandoned restaurant, I told myself, slowly pushing the door open. As I made my way through the kitchen, a distant mob-like noise started to increase. As I slowly opened the last door, I saw parts of a massive arena with several cages hosting snake battles, all bruised and beaten as if they were at it for hours. A tier above them were the mongrels, raising bets at the top of their voice. What I didn't expect, however, was the top tier of these arenas that was filled with the wealthy mongooses. Oh, this is not good, I said to myself, as I stepped back till I faced resistance from what I assumed was the wall. And then everything cut to black. I found myself sitting in the middle of the arena with my hands tied behind my back, surrounded by snakes, being given first aid by the mongrels. I heard a soft-spoken voice approach me. You had one job, Admiral. Only the golden-rimmed glasses shining in the dark now. Baby said the imbecile and throw him off our scent, said the mayor with a strong disapproval in his voice. Now he knows too much. Let the serpent handle him. It was the serpent from the other night. We don't want any issues here, he continued. It was nice knowing you. I'll let the warlock know you stopped by. I am sure he'd be delighted to know that you made it out alive. Empty the arena, he said as he looked away and walked towards the exit. Within minutes, all that remained were me, the serpent, the admiral and a palpable tension in my head. This is our best venom. He will make sure your struggle is minimal, said the admiral with a smirk. The snake slowly made his way towards me, crawled from behind and hissed in my ear as my heart rate worked like the trauma at the end of an Iron Maiden concert. This is how it ends, my brain whispered and my eyes closed. As he gripped my hands, I felt my palms go cold till I couldn't feel the noose anymore. Quick, run, yelled a voice. I opened my eyes to find the admiral on the floor. Follow me if you want to live, said the snake. Before I could process anything, we were on the run. After a few narrow misses and being on the run for a good 45 minutes, we hid under a manhole cover, trying to catch our breath. He had his eye on the small gap looking outwards. Why did you do it? I asked, shocked, surprised and grateful at the same time. His eyes still cemented firmly on the gap. Do you think all the snakes are the same? We only have one intention to hurt you. I agree there are some like that and those are the ones that won't spare us either. There are some that do it to protect themselves because that's the only way they've ever known. Others don't even want that. We just want to be left alone. But instead we all bear the label of venom. I've been here for so long, I don't even know what it is like outside. I just know I can't be here knowing me and others like me are being called something we inherently aren't. Bringing up your bow tie or my irrational fear of snakes seemed trivial at this point. Head straight then cross the second door on the right. There should be an exit to the city. You don't have much time, he said looking firmly at the tiny gap. What about you? I asked. The mongooses are probably out searching for us everywhere. The arena is unguarded. This is my only chance to get them out. I decided to stay and help him out. Are you crazy? This isn't your battle, he said. It isn't, but you saved me and I owe you this much, I said. We headed back to the arena. Behind the battlegrounds, there were reptiles of every kind in locked cages. We started unlocking them as fast as we could. How do you know which ones are the good ones? I asked. You are saving their lives. For them, you are the good one, he said. Once out of the building, we ran towards the kingdom wall. There was a crack in the wall. He'd been planning it all along. As everyone escaped, we stood guard to make sure they make it out in time. He was the last one to exit. He turned back, looked at me with a thankful bow and said, We'll find the warlock in the two-tailed city. Minutes later, I took the path he suggested earlier and headed back. Whoa, looks like we went a little overboard this time. Time to sleep, little kiddo, 
I'll see you around. Good night. Love, Tada. As for all our other listeners, thanks for listening in.